Automate your text no matter how long it is. Working in sports, we deal with a lot of different character links when it comes to team names or player names. One of the strategies that I've developed to handle this is to outsource keyframes, which allows me to update the text without any manual adjustments. No matter the length of the text, it's always gonna start and end in the same place. Let's hop in and take a look at how to do this. I have After Effects open and I'm in a blank comp because we're gonna start from scratch here. Go up here, grab your text tool. We're gonna add Nebraska Corn Huskers, my alma mater. And when we click on this, let's go up here to align and center that vertically in the frame. I'm also gonna hit Y and make sure that this Anchor point is attached to the left side here. One other thing is that we want to make sure that we have our paragraph set to left align for this to work. All right, so you see my text, and what I'm going to do is make the text go from this side. I want to start it to start here, and by the end, I want to scroll through the frame and end somewhere around around here. All right, and the way that we're going to do this is by right clicking up here when I have my layer selected go into expression controls and slider control within my effects control panel here and I'm going to add a keyframe on the first frame and I'm going to go to the end here it's 10 seconds long and I'm going to change this to say 100. These are the keyframes that we're going to use to drive our animation and the way that we're going to use them is through the linear expression. So if I hit P on my text, I'm gonna alt click on my X position to add an expression. I'm gonna go ahead and fit to fill this. All right. And the linear expression, if you're not familiar, goes something like this, linear, and it needs parentheses. We're gonna have a driver, a driver minimum, a driver max, a passenger min, and a passenger max. All right, so that's gonna be the final line of code here that we have here, and it's obviously gonna yell at me and tell me it needs more info. So the first couple parts of this are very simple. So we have a driver, we have a driver min, and we have a driver max. So our driver is going to be the keyframes that we already added. So I'm just gonna pick whip up here to our slider control that's gonna drive the animation. And then our driver min and driver max are the keyframes that we had set. So we had set them at zero at the beginning and 100 at the end. Our min is zero, our first keyframe, and the max is 100. So that's the, that's the easy part of the equation. We're basically just putting inputs in for things that we've already set up here through our slider control. So now we have our passenger min and our passenger max. So our passenger min, I'm gonna hard code in here. So let's call this 200. So I want this to start 200 pixels in. And our max, we need to find the width of our text. And the reason I'm setting it up this way is because I wanna be able to change the text. I wanna be able to double click on this and change the text to a different team and not have any of the animation change. So in order to do that, we need to find the width of this text so it always looks at the width of the text in case it changes. So we need to go up here and I'm adding this above because it, it there's an order of operations and expressions. You have to add this before you can use it. So let's add team width. And I wanna reference this layer. And to find the width, we're gonna use the source rect at time function. And we want the width, and I can't type. So this is saying, look at this layer and find me the width. So we need to return this into the passenger max, but we need to do some simple math in order for it to return correctly. So we're actually gonna start with passenger min because we wanna start at 200. We wanna start at the same place that this one starts at. And I'm gonna subtract, I want it to go to the left. I wanna subtract the team width. All right, so when I click off, 
my CTI is at the beginning, and you can see it jumped to 200. As I scroll, it is going to end in the same place it started, so we're 200 pixels in. Well, what if I don't want it to go all the way across the screen here? I have this comp. This comp is 1920 by 1080, so I know my width is 1920 for the comp. So if I go back in here to my passenger max, and if I add 1600 back in here, when I click off, that's going to end on the right side of the screen. So it's going to scroll through, start to finish, and if I speed this up a little bit, it's going to end right here. Now, this is where the magic happens because, let me zoom out a little bit so you can see. Let me leave this at the end. If I change this name to be a different school, you can see the end ends in the same exact spot. The beginning starts in the exact same spot. So this is going to scroll through the screen. And all I did was update this text. If I duplicate this so that you can see this better, let me change this to back to Nebraska. So if I start at the beginning, let's see if we can put all this in here. So this is that other school here. And this is Nebraska. So you can see as we as we start going, Nebraska is going to start to catch up. So it ends in the same spot. It's just going to be moving a little bit faster. And you can make that say whatever you want. Say you're using this for, let me get rid of that other school. Let me, let's say you're using this for a background element in your big screen work. Yeah, let's just make it a stroke because you'd probably be using it that way. So instead of the team name, maybe you want the sport, softball. Oop, turn off my caps. All right, it's in the same spot, but it's going to be moving a little bit slower. And if I add volleyball, longer text, if I zoom out here, but still ends in the same spot, starts in the same spot. So I hope this saves you some time as you're building out graphics to be able to change things on the fly will help your workflow, but also help your mental health when you get requests for changes.